Pyongyang's May Day Stadium hosts the pinnacle of North Korean culture, the Arirang Games. The massive spectacle lasts for over two months. 20,000 schoolchildren with flip cards form a human television in the stands. Six nights per week, over 100,000 performers act out North Korean history. There was a 10 to 1 performer to spectator ratio at the world's largest non-car racing stadium with 150,000 seats. This is North Korea's mass culture. The show combines Korean folk traditions with socialist propaganda slogans. Here, the commentary describes the so-called eternal president. Kim Jong-il's father, who died in 1994, Kim Il-sung. Arirang is the Juche state religion's annual climax, reminiscent of the opening ceremonies at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. China, Yugoslavia, and Romania excelled at mass games during the Cold War. North Korea is at its best and most elaborate during Arirang. Nationalism seems to distract the population from industrial and agricultural shortages. The usual anti-American rhetoric was toned down this year. American tourists are only permitted to visit the country for Arirang. These games are a major source of hard currency for the regime. Foreigners pay several hundred dollars per ticket. Arirang grosses about five million dollars, just thirty dollars per participant. The eccentric North Korean leader Kim Jong-il didn't appear during the performance. South Korea had just begun a massive war game with the U.S. earlier that day. Despite the looming threat of sanctions, a nuclear arms race, and an aging leader, Arirang allows North Koreans to glorify their culture. For World Focus, this is Ben Piven in Pyongyang, North Korea.